when you mention it in the drinking water, and I think we've talked about that before with fluoride in, in your drinking water, one thing I never thought of was if it's in your drinking water, it's also in the water that you're bathing in as well on your skin, which is the largest organ in your body. What does the long-term effect of that do? And do you actually ingest more that way than maybe if you have a couple glasses of water a day? Uh, there is some suggestion that you do absorb it through your skin and there is zip doodly squat research on that. They don't know. You ask them for a study, they don't got one. And it's an easy one to do. You have a bucket of fluoridated water, put your arm in here and measure your blood level over here. It's not that hard. I, I don't know whether or not it absorbs through the skin, but I do know once you put it in the water, it's in your coffee. It's in your breakfast cereal. It's made in Battle Creek, Michigan. Well, it's fluoridated in Battle Creek, Michigan. So anything that is dehydrated from the tap water, whether it's post toasties or Wheaties or, or sugar frosted flakes, if there's fluoride in the, the batch water, it concentrates in the food or that they've made from, so I say don't eat things out of boxes or cans. Mm. And that if you want coffee, brew your own. Uh, there are some good coffee makers that will actually take the fluoride out before they make your coffee. But a lot of the little corner stores, it's psh, here's your coffee right out of the tap. So, and, and then it's very hard to get out. Don't, don't let them say, oh, we filtered it. I can't tell you how many restaurants say, oh, we filter our water. And I said, what do you filter it with? And they say, we don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, I can guarantee you, you're not taking it out. Because there's two things that take fluoride out. You can take it out with aluminum, activated alum, or you can take it out with bone char, which really annoys the vegetarians. So, do you want aluminum in your water? Or do you want dead bones in your water? You, you get, there's only two ways to get it out. You can run it through reverse osmosis, but that just lowers it. And then it makes your water acidic. So, well, you make your water alkaline. Does that take it out? No, it doesn't take it out at all. So, two ways to get it out. You can, uh, the real way you can get it out, three ways. Distill it. You can turn it back to water. But then you don't have your minerals. Well, you should go buy pharmaceutical grade pure minerals and put them back in so we can get all the junkets in the water. The lie is that tap water is safe to drink. And you can prove me right by the next time you get this nice glowing report on your water quality, read it. Because there's two standards for water. One is I can sell it to you and the other one it's safe for you for a lifetime. And so you go through that standard and look at it, most of the waters in the United States don't comply at all with the, what's called MCLG, the goal for a lifetime exposure. Lead, for example, the lifetime goal for lead exposure in water is zero. Mercury is the same. So when you've got water that has like Flint, Michigan, you know, the, and San Diego, California, now that they've begun to add silicon fluoride to the water, the silicon fluoride sucks lead out of the pipes. It's a chelator for lead. So it removes lead from your solders. If your house was soldered the joints together before 1978, they want to talk like it's lead pipes. No, it's copper pipes with lead solder or brass faucets. And that silica fluoride eats those. And so how do they test the water? They turn the faucet on and let it run 10 gallons. Then they measure it. Well, who's doing that in a drought area? Nobody's doing that. They're drinking the first glass. Well, the first glass is toxic. So what they need to tell people is the truth. Stop drinking the tap water. Reprocess it. Remove everything that's in it because it's been used 400 times already at the time it gets to your house. And so stop, reconstitute it as just plain H2O, that's called distillation. And then you've got a beverage that's suitable for using in making more coffee or pasta or rice. Or maybe you want to put some minerals in it and have it for a bedtime snack with a little calms in it. But don't drink the tap water. That's what they should be telling them.